I have two shotgun barrels here, both of which are rusted. I mean, they're, they're pretty nasty, but why and how? And how do we get out of this? So we're going to do the practical side of conservation. What happens when a set of shotgun barrels walks in this shop and, and what do I do about it? So let's get on down the rabbit hole and conserve some shotgun barrels and talk about the tale of two tubes. Let's go. When you walk out of an air conditioned building at 72 to 73 degrees into an environment that has a dew point that's so high a cup of coffee will sweat, you can understand that this can and this barrel both sweat. And if you let this sweat, and while it's wet like this, you stuff it into a gun sock or it's sweating while it's in a gun sock, it will sit there and hold the water up against the barrel and it absolutely will destroy a gun, destroy the chambers, such as what happens when you live in a place where you don't breathe air, you breathe low pressure steam. So these are the sour barrels and this entire set of barrels pretty much is this and it's it's actually got three dimensions to it and I don't know if I can change the color here for you but you, you can see that just by rubbing that you know, there it is right there you can see that as I'm rubbing this you can actually see the rust starting to appear on the surface as I'm popping through and this is what the collectors don't want you to wire wheel down through the surface finish is still here all we got to do is take all this light surface oxidation off of this this entire set of pipes looks like this from 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 uh, soup to nuts front to back this set of pipes looks like that now the other set of pipes here that's a different story we contrast with these guys this is the Beretta set and I'm trying to get you it's like a basket weave up here at the front end of this thing there it is you can see it this definitely has the imprint of the front end of a gun bag where these were put away wet, allowed to have the fabric stick to the barrel and then pulled out and ripped off. It's kind of like tearing a, uh, it's kind of like tearing a Band-Aid off. So we've got the odd shanker going down. We've got areas here where the bluing is just flat missing. And this bluing, I don't know how they put this on. I would describe it as a hot dip, but we know we can't hot dip. Barrels, um, I don't know. It's really weird. But as we get in here, you see how this is turning white? You can actually see where the foreign was right there. There's the demarcation line. This bluing was taken off by the salts of the guy's hand, grabbing it right there like that. So the guy's hand was in there, and that's going to have to get dealt with, um, as well as um, there's a lot of latent rust here that is discolored. The, uh, the flats, and it's just, it's atrocious. The gutters look terrible. Um, so what we're gonna do is boil both of these. I'm gonna tell you, it's gonna take two passes to get the uh, to get the other set right. All right, let me go get these things hung in the tank and we're gonna boil them. This will take about an uh, 45 minutes per pass on both sets. And the next time we surface, it'll be before, we'll be back here on the vise before we card. We've come out of the boiling tank now, and you can see all of this surface conversion here. And none of this has been carted yet. This is just what's laying loose on the surface. And these tubes are actually pretty clean. They're just speckled up here. This is solid here where the guy's hands were because there's actually a layer of rust there. These tubes are gonna be all right. I think these are gonna come down to either what's white is white and what's dark is dark, and then we'll rust blue these the rest of the way and turn them all blue. However,
These are the pre-wheeled sour barrels, and I'm, I've got the lights turned off in the room, and I'm just, you can see here now where you can say uh, made in Germany, you can see, you can barely see the words here, but this is some kind of special uh, steel, Laufstahl made somewhere, I don't know, but the point is this, this stuff here has got a lot of depth to it. There's really no difference. You could sit here and cart a gun by uh, pencil sharpening and it would take you forever though. You see now the made in Germany is starting to stick out. The problem with this barrel, this thing's gonna have to get converted again. So we're gonna start with the sour barrels here. And this is a very, very soft brush. Some of you have seen me use it before. You can do this by hand. All I'm doing is knocking all the smooth oxide off the surface. And we can see that there's still some rust here. These are going to have to get run again. They're going to have to get run again. But let's just knock the big stuff off the top here and see just how bad it is. Yeah, anything that's still left after you boiled it the first time, going to have to get run again because there's still some stuff but it's going to convert down and if we want to see what these barrels would have looked like when they were new you get up underneath the point and you see how beautiful that blueing job is but what I'm not doing here is I'm not destroying any of the original polish only the spots where the rust got this is not a very aggressive wheel you can stick your hand in it you try that with a regular wire wheel it'll take your fingers off We've done all this before, but I'm going to do it again because the previous conversion videos didn't do a very good job of explaining what I wanted to do. This can be done with degreased steel wool. You do not need to buy one of these high dollar wheels. But here we go, troll alert, pop quiz. Who made this wheel and where do I get it? Because I'm going to get asked that by about 35 people. So I'm going to throw it up here. We're going to throw it up in the comments, Ian. Are you ready? Here we go. Hold that thought. And we're back. I've used the opportunity to go grab the other pair of barrels here. So let's take a look at... Now these, everything came off. So this is just a loose converted oxide on the surface. We didn't freak. We didn't bust out a heavy duty wire wheel. The gun came in the shop and the very first thing I do is convert it. I won't even do a conventional cleaning anymore. Hey guys, if you're liking this, spread the word and tell some other people and bring them over here and let them see this. We need to be spreading the gospel about conversion here. So when somebody says their gun has patina, what they have is an oil version of all of this mung on the surface. And once you strip all the oil off of that patina and you look at what's going on underneath it, usually a beautiful gun hiding underneath in here. Now one of the beauties of a rust blue is, is we don't have to take this gun down to white in order to re-blue it. We can catch these little shankers up here. We can catch them up. There's no depth here. On those other barrels, when you ran your finger over that, there was depth to it. Here we're looking at bare steel that just doesn't have oxide in those places. So let me finish these here. Bruno, what do they call this? ASMR? Yeah, ASMR. So 
where we'll go from here, we'll just pretend we're going into the second step of rust bluing, where we will reapply the chemical. In this particular case, I'm going to use some of Bob Beezy's American uh, American rust glue, and we're going to let these barrels rust for about a day, maybe two. We're going to let them frog air up. And then I'm going to come back here and show you what they look like. Bob has some fabulous videos on his website that explains the actual process of rust bluing far better than I can explain it. Okay, so that set of tubes is pretty messed up. They're clean now. So now there's no live rust on this thing, and that's where we're heading for. I got the lights turned down here in an attempt to show you, you know, I boiled the barrels and the rust didn't come off. It did, but it comes off in steps. So what I want to show you here is that this particular rust up at the muzzle has depth. Okay, and we can scrub it here, and you can actually see that the rust is coming off. Now you can take it off like this, but you're going to wind up with, here, let's get a look at it this way. There it is. See those two piles of rust right there? And right there, whoops, right there. That's what we've just scrubbed, and I don't want to scrub down to the bottom of that because then I'll wind up with these big white spots on the barrel. There it is, right there. Right there, now you can really see it. So that was me just digging at the remaining. Now, I don't want to take that down to the level of the steel because, like I said, I'll have a white spot there. So anyway, this set of tubes has got to jump back in um, to the uh, in, into the conversion process probably two or three more 30 to 45 minute boil outs to get to the bottom of this stuff. However, here's something that's pretty neat. Hang on a minute, we're gonna do a fade here. We've pulled back now. Having said that about the, about the mess that's going on up here at the muzzles, this is the same set of tubes right here that we had before that had all that rust all over it. And I'm gonna tell you what, they're turning that nice dark blue and we didn't panic. There was actually a decent set of barrels underneath that and now we can read everything that's written on the barrel. Beautiful stuff, look at that. We couldn't even, even come close to reading any of the words that were written on the barrel before. So we're making progress and we're doing it without horking this up too bad. All right, so we followed the instructions on, on Bob's website, rustblue.com, uh, for applying a rusting solution to the barrel letting it frog hair up. Well, the humidity is so damn high outside. We set this thing on the, on the back of my truck for about three hours and it got good and frosty. And what it did was the following. You can see where that rust is. We've just converted it. Now Bruno's gonna try to track the focus here. But remember, there was a big white spot right there. And what we're doing now this was the barrel that had all the big white chambers all over it. And I got news for you. This bad boy is cleaning right up. Now we may want to do it one more time. It's not exactly all the way dark blue. But the point is we didn't panic. We didn't take them down to uh, white. We didn't do anything. We just did a little bit of old school gunsmithing on this. So let me clean this off here. Yeah, that's going to have to go a little bit. That's going to have to go a little more. Now, there was a little bit of pitting here. I'll tell you, there was a little bit of pitting here. We didn't polish down below that. We just turned what's in the bottom of the pitting blue, and we made this gun a lot less heinous. We're going up on the gun rack. And there you go. Don't panic. Don't pull out a really, really dark wire wheel. Convert and save them. Thanks a lot, guys.